switch gears to RCC, where upfront treatment is either dual checkpoint inhibitors or TKI with IO. But then at the time of progressive disease, re-challenging with more immunotherapy has not shown much benefit. Actually, the only data post-immunotherapy we have is for tivazineb, which showed PFS, and tivazineb is approved in this space, or more recently, belzutifan. That brings us to our study here, TNEVO2. Petros, can you walk us through the study design and its findings? And importantly, what does it really mean for us if the disease has progressed in first line to IO or IOTKI combination? Thank you. You know, it's very interesting to see the evolution in the field, of course, and the emerging therapy options. And one of the questions we have had for a long time in kidney cancer, and by the way, we have similar questions in urothelial carcinoma, is the question of immune checkpoint inhibitor with challenge. If someone has progression on a checkpoint inhibitor, does it make sense to re-challenge that patient with another checkpoint inhibitor in the future? And obviously, that's a big question because uh, right now, uh, in clinical practice, people may do it, and the question is, is it worth doing it or not? So the, in that context, CONTACT-03 and TNIVO2, very similar trials, both presented by Dr. Trueri. Uh, these trials try to answer the question, if someone has uh, prior progression to checkpoint inhibition, is it worth their challenge? And both trials told us the same thing, do not do it. The, the data from CONTACT-03 and TNIVO2 were pretty clear that if a patient has progression to checkpoint inhibition, there is no benefit from Rechallenge that patient with another checkpoint inhibitor. And the TNIVO2 had a few little bit details and differences compared to the CONTACT-03. Uh, one of those questions was, uh, is uh, the immediately prior therapy relevant? For example, if patients had immunotherapy as the immediate prior therapy, is that the reason that the CONTACT-03 was uh, a negative trial? And TNIVO2, uh, uh, someone can argue that uh, that trial allowed patients uh, that um, uh, they may have an other intervening therapy. Uh, so uh, it, uh, immunotherapy did not need to be the immediate prior therapy. So uh, that, that was relevant, I think, uh, because we wanted to have that nuance. And as I mentioned, TNIVO2 uh, so the same thing with contact 3 no benefit with addition of uh, a challenge with checkpoint inhibition. There was some critique uh, about the dose of tivozanib, uh, as you saw in the tivozanib uh, uh, in the combination uh, arm, uh, it was a lower dose. Yes. Uh, and some people yes. were ans asking, is that the reason that there is no benefit because you're using lower dose of tivozanib in the in the combination are, I think that's a reasonable question. Uh, I don't think we know the answer. If we have a higher dose, would it have made a difference? We don't know. However, in my mind, contact O3 and TNIVO2, same result pretty much. That the the curves are you know on top of each other. Personally, my take home is. If a patient in the clinical practice has progression uh, while on a checkpoint inhibitor, I would not uh, uh, re-challenge that patient again. Petros, thanks very much for summarizing it so well. What's really the key here, as you stated, is that re-challenging with immunotherapy, while on immunotherapy and the progression happened, there is no role now. While if the patient received that in adjuvant setting and the progression happened after, then certainly utilize immunotherapy. To reiterate, the first line, if you're using TKI, we have few TKIs available on progression, and tivozanib is in fact the only one TKI that has been studied in randomized clinical trial post-IO setting. And dose here stands as 1.3 milligram once daily, we're three weeks on and one week off.